This is the story of three men with, on the surface, very little in common. Ruben is a former professional mountain climber turned property developer. Tom is the curator of a museum in Dorset. And Steve is a writer, broadcaster and former presenter of BBC's popular motoring show, Top Gear. But back when it was actually a motoring show. And the thing that they have in common is that they love old cars. And they love to buy old cars. Unloved, unrestored, abandoned, orphan cars. Some of them turn out to be diamonds in the rough. They're restored and sent off to their new owners. And others turn out to be right old rust buckets. But instead of dispatching them to the scrapyard, they turn them into something else. A wall hanging, a desk, a barbecue. And they have a motto. Will it start? Or is it out? I'm Steve. And I'm Ruben. We like to buy old cars. We're buying off of them, don't we? We do. Now, when people are buying a classic car, what should they do? They should go see it. They should check out all the paperwork that comes yep. with it. A full service history would be nice, wouldn't it? It'd be very nice. I should make sure it's got an engine and some wheels and tyres in each corner. Or you could do what we do and buy cars sight unseen from really badly written adverts with tiny little blurry pictures. The sacred barn find. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a car, mate. What have you bought? Right. I bought a British sports car from the 1960s with a glass fibre body and a Ford engine. What do you think it is? Lotus or a Reliant? A Lotus or a Reliant? No. You're not going to disappoint me now, are you? I bet not only have you never driven one of these cars, you've never seen one of these cars, you've never heard of one of these cars, and it's about to arrive outside this workshop. Let's have a look. What have you bought here? <laughs> what even is it? I'll tell you what it even is. It's an Eagle SS. An Eagle? What's one of them? That. That's, that's an Eagle SS. Back in the 60s, kit cars like the Eagle SS were the answer to two questions. Question one. What are we going to do with all these rusty old Volkswagen Beetles? And question two, how do sexy young people get into lost long two-seater sports cars when they can't afford them? So, what you did is go up to a scrapyard and find yourself a rusty Beetle with a running engine. You throw away the crispy bits and bolt on a sexy new fiberglass body from somebody like Eagle. Now, Ford made much of the GT40's low height. They put it in the name, just 40 inches high. But an Eagle SS was the low slungest of all the low slung sports cars, just 37 inches high. The Eagle SS began life in Britain, but then the rights to make it and the moulds for the fiberglass body were sold to America. The rights were then sold back to Britain and it ended its life in the 70s when it was made about three miles up the road from Rubens' workshop in Accrington. Yes, that's Accrington. Yes. I think you've been ripped off for this one, Steve. There's no mortar in here. Ah. Maybe that's because the mortar is in the front. Ah, but I thought no of us were at the back. Right, let's get it off. We've got a battery. We have got a battery. There's no water in that radiator and let's see if there's some oil in it and then let's see if we can get the damn thing to start. Yeah, it's worrying. Did he put anything down the balls for us or? Yeah, um, I spoke to the bloke and he said it'd been standing outside since John Major's Conservative government was <laughs> Yeah, so what We've got They're some coming out. Plugs. Do you know what? These plugs are coming right, out all too easy. These plugs are coming out so easily, you'd think that what we don't perhaps has already taken them out and then just put them back in finger tight and then Ruben was taking them out for the camera. They haven't been out in a long time. The state of them plugs. Right. 
Okay. This has got me worried now. Let's have a go. We'll get some spanners on it, see if she turns. Whack a battery on her and see what happens, eh? Probably the most famous TV car in the whole and entire history of British television was the Trotter's independent trading van driven around Peckham and other parts of London by Del Boy and his brother Dave. But what was it? Straight to the back of the class if you just said Robin Reliant. It was a Reliant, but it was a Regal Supervan too. But there was another car made by Reliant back in the late 60s and early 70s that was very different to their humble little three-wheelers. That was the Scimitar, stylish transport for fashionable young people on the move with stuff that they needed to move around. It had a three-litre V6 forward engine and a top speed of over 120 miles an hour. The body was fiberglass and they painted it eye-popping colours like orange and purple and apple green. And it had the seal of approval from royalty. People will tell you the Princess Anne had a scimitar. She didn't. She had eight scimitars, one after the other, and she paid full price for all of them. White Reliant Scimitar. Hasn't run since 1986, but look at the condition. This is going to be so easy. Hey, Tom. What a result, mate. Where did you find it? This is my cast. It's a White Reliant Scimitar, Tom. You said White Reliant Scimitar hasn't run since 1986. Yeah, but not this White Reliant Scimitar. That White Reliant Scimitar. Oh, shit. Say what we've done, we've got this car back on the ground where it's not been for seven years. Before that, it was parked next to this container, and before that, it was in a garden. To give you an idea of the last time that this car ran and how long ago it is, the last year, the last time it ran, was the biggest year in the history of the British car industry. So 1.8 million cars, and the top 10 selling cars in Britain. We're all made in Britain. That's how long ago it was. The top 10 cars were Fords, Vauxhalls, and Austin Rovers. And that was the last time this car went through its own power. And half of those companies don't even exist anymore. Look at that. That is pattern. You no, know, that's what I call pattern. You could probably see off a small town with what's on the tip of my finger. It's not run for 33 years. It's not 34 years. It's not been cleaned for even longer. Shall we give it a clean? Let's give it a wash. You give it a wash. I'll you? give it a wash. I'm going to make a cup of tea. All right. right it just already looks so much, I mean, it actually looks like we might be able to get this done, doesn't it? Yeah, but we haven't even, even checked if this engine in it. I mean, it's in it, in it didn't have a. It's riding pretty high at the front. It doesn't have a little. Oh, yeah, it's an engine. No! Don't do that, you break something. Ah, uh -huh. oh, you cracked it. Crack don't do that again. Uh -huh. We need to oil those engines for some time. I don't think just bent and we'll, we'll get it open somewhere, but there is an engine in there. Yeah. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> Definitely need to do sand belt, though. If you're trying to get a car that hasn't run for 34 years... There isn't uh, a radiator. What? <laughs> there isn't a radiator. <laughs> <laughs> If someone told you they were the owner of a classic Triumph, 
then the first question that you might appropriately ask them is, is it a car or a motorcycle? If they told you it was a car, you'd probably think that they had a Triumph Stag, or perhaps a hairy-chested TR6, or even that saloon car racing champion, the Triumph Dolomite Sprint. If they told you it was a Triumph 1300, you might struggle to picture it, and that might be a blessing. It was a bit of an odd-looking car on account of its unusually high engine. But it was quite innovative, the first front-wheel car produced by Leyland. They built 150,000 between 1965 and 1970, but there were probably fewer of them left than the aforementioned sports cars because, well, people just used them till they were worn out and then threw them away. Hey, Steve. What? Guess what I've just got? Uh, a car? Close. A train? A bike? No, it's got four wheels. Right, uh, is it a stag? No, we're going lower. Dolomite Sprint? Uh, I'd like one, but we haven't got one of them, no. Think front wheel drive. <laughs> right, uh, a Toledo? Uh, a bit, bit lower. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it outside? It's outside, let's right, go and well, have a look. have a look, God knows what, it's probably Harold. <laughs> Are they front-wheel drive? I can't remember. I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you... 